you have never lived that experience before and you get to a certain level, you 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 can't even fathom what people go through though. No, nah, you're right. So you're what right. saving habits if they're barely being able to put food on the table with that amount? I mean, if anything, be more knowledgeable about what's going on. Yeah, in the, in the community don't criticize so you can lives. say something that's more beneficial to them so they can have a little belief in you. But if you saying stuff like that, yeah. It's easy to yeah. it's easy uh, to speak on gonna help none. Right. It's easy to speak on people when you don't know their experience. It's easy to speak it's, on people when you up. For real. <laughs> when you up, you always got something mm. to say, always got something to say all of a, all of a sudden. Cuz baby, we remember those $25 groceries. Bruh. What's good, y'all? It's the Duma Shats React, and we're back, back with, with another, another video. video. Who we got today, see? Today, we're back with another American Reaction. Yes, yes. Super excited about this video. If you're new to us, and, and we're new, new to you, you, make sure you scroll down, hit that subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on the road to 200K. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Let's get it. What can assure me as a human being? and a concerned African-American that the ANC will indeed have a fiscal solvent policy that will continue the use of the resources of South Africa in a meaningful way. Or should I put it more succinctly, will your economy be based on the Marxist system, socialism, or capitalism, or both? I knew that that, that was the question you wanted to ask. <laughs> if, if I may... What do we want? What we want to achieve is a healthy and vibrant economy which can ensure full employment to our people, maximum production, and the development of social justice. We wanted to rectify the imbalances that exist in our economy. One of the companies, well-known companies in the country, one company owns more than 75% of the shares quoted in the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. This is illustrative of how our economy is organized. It is more, the, the, the resources of the country are monopolized by a white minority even in that minority by a few individuals, whereas the masses of the people, especially blacks, are left poor. According to the World Bank, this is the most unequal society in the world as measured by the Gini coefficient. That inequality is still along racial lines where, for the most part, Whoa. white South Africans are better off than their black South Africa. Julius Malema said, and I quote, white monopoly capital does exist. There was a deliberate creation of it. Rupert is one of the people who are monopolizing. White monopoly capital is concerned that there's now a change of power dynamics within the treasury. And they are fearing that this change of power dynamics within the treasury can actually undermine their continued control and management of the South African economy. I heard President Zuma say in Nyanga on Monday night is, if you don't believe in white monopoly capital, you don't live in South Africa. There's no science to that statement, I'm afraid. There is no science to that statement. I'm saying, produce the evidence. Every South Africa. You know, at the end of the day, I just think that's what most people around the world really aim for. Yeah. Um, to own everything in their country. No, jeez, nah, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> nah, for it to be balanced. Oh, for yeah, For shared definitely. capitalism, for people to yeah, have yeah. A, a foot, an actual piece of the pie. Yeah. Not a slice, a whole piece, like, like enough to share, you know what I'm saying, to go around. That's what they really want. I love that Mandela put at the very beginning of his uh, speech was that employment for yeah, people. For people for, to actually gain more wealth and gain more comfortability. Yeah. Um, in their, in, their, in their lifestyles, you know, so mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's what everybody would want at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, look around the world, people got that now. Yeah, I feel like every country should aim for equality 
when it comes to employment mm -hmm. and wealth. No country wants to see their people be homeless or without, you know. I feel like that's always going to be people's focus when it comes to equality. Yeah. They want to be able to live well. Yeah. Yeah, we got to bring them homeless numbers down. Because yeah. we do have locations where there is no homelessness. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, right. that should be a global thing, experience for everybody. Right. And, and of course, we already know in the United States, baby, we, yeah. we, we know. Yeah. Okay, we know. We work with the homeless community. Mm -hmm. African use or comes in contacts with one or more of these brands every day. Julius Malima refers to them scathingly as the Stellenbosch Mafia, the very worst instance of white monopoly capital. But who honestly are these mega wealthy individuals, and what influence do they exert not solely on Stellenbosch but more widely on South African society? Author of the book The Stellenbosch Mafia, Peter Dutoit begins by exploring the roots of Stellenbosch. The birthplace of apartheid yeah, leaders, okay. intellectuals, the newspaper man. empires, and that's more. That's the guy with the uh, garage with all for the, the cars. cars, the fancy okay. old school. I'm talking about them team look. Luxury, luxury. His house is so big, it's a museum. Yeah, that was, that's what you, okay. that was your comment you had made yeah. about it. It was really that big. Yeah, that's yeah. very familiar land right there. We've mm -hmm. seen this one on the video you guys sent in, and um, that was definitely one of his highlights, his garage and his winery that he mm -hmm. built. You know what I'm saying? So, this the guy? I guess. That owns like 75%? I, I don't know if that's him, but... But, but he got his foot in the, in the he, door with he, that. He a part of the building. He's a part though. of that little mafia thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was just a term, babe. Oh. Hopefully no, they actually have it. No, 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 no. I know it is a term, but that's what they got on the book, too. That's mm -hmm. what they named and titled it. Okay. Ho yeah. Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, that's, yeah. You know, it's just a term, hopefully. Yeah. About 50 kilometers outside of Cape Town lies the beautiful town of Stellenbosch. Nestled against vineyards and blue mountains that stretch to the sky. Here reside some of South Africa's wealthiest oh, individuals, so all male, you know, all Afrikaans. Mm -hmm and all stinking rich. Johan Rupert, Janny Mouton, Marcus Just, and Christo Weiss, to name a few. Today we are going to look at Johan Rupert's. I have to thank Mr. Julius Malema, because if it hadn't been for his narratives, I was in danger of becoming totally irrelevant. <laughs> Johann Peter Rupert is a billionaire businessman from South Africa who was born on June 1, 1950. He is the eldest son of business tycoon Anton Rupert. After dropping out of medical school due to lack of funds, Anton Rupert earned a degree in chemistry from the University of Pretoria where he lectured briefly. Then he started a dry cleaning business. Sometime later, with an initial investment of £10 and two co-investors in his garage. He started producing cigarettes which he eventually merged into the tobacco and industrial conglomerate Rembrandt Group and oversaw its transformation into the industrial and luxury oh, brand sector. They didn't put that out of Rembrandt eventually split into Remgro, an investment company with financials, mining and industrial interests, and Richemont, a luxury goods group headquartered in Switzerland. Today, the business empire includes hundreds of companies in 35 countries on six continents with combined annual net sales of nearly $10 billion. Johann was born and raised in Stellenbosch. He went to Paul Roos Gymnasium and the University of Stellenbosch where he studied business law and economics where he dropped out to pursue a career in business. However, in 2004, the university granted him an honorary doctorate in economics. In 2008, he was granted a privileged doctorate from Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University. Portrayed as isolated by the Financial Times and Barons, Rupert rarely gives interviews and shuns public events. He's nicknamed Rupert the Bear. Johann served his business apprenticeship in New York City, where he worked for Chase Manhattan Bank for two years and Lazard Frères for three years. He then returned to South Africa in 1979 to found and serve as CEO of the Rand Commercial Bank. He served as RMB's CEO until 1984. When RMB and Rand Consolidated Investments merged to form RMB Holdings. He left the company to join Rembrandt. In 1988, the Rembrandt Group founded the Swiss luxury goods company Richemont, 
which in turn acquired Rembrandt stake in Rothmans. Richemont also owns luxury brands such as Cartier, Jewelry, Alfred Dunhill and Sulka, Designer okay. Clothing, Seeger, Leather Bags, Piaget, Baumet and Mercier and Vacheron Constantine, Swiss watches, and Montblanc, writing instruments. In 1995, Rembrandt and Richemont merged their respective tobacco businesses into what was then the world's fourth largest cigarette maker, Rothmans International. In 1999, Rothmans International merged with British American Tobacco, BAT, the world's second largest cigarette manufacturer. Before the split, Remgro held 10% of BAT and Richemont 18.6%. The Rupert family is also deeply involved in the South African wine and liquor industry, owning the Lormorans and La Motte wine estates and having a stake in Rupert and Rothschild vignerons. Real deep. Real deep. The winemaking partnership between the Rupert and Rothschild families, at the time of his death due to a car crash in 2001, Rupert's youngest son, Anthonage, was head of Rupert and Rothschild vignerons. The Ruperts also partially control two of South Africa's largest wine merchant houses. Stellenbosch Farmers Winery, SFW, and Distillers Corporation, who together produce one of every six bottles of wine in South Africa and nearly 80% of the country's brandy. These two companies have merged to form Distel Group Limited. Big changes were made in 2000 when First of all, he, um, go ahead, babe. That's, that's what you call not having your eggs in one basket. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. First, let's go, let's roll it back to when he was in New York at Chase for two years. And then he left, went back to South Africa, and made his own bank. Getting up all the, I mean, racking up all the skills, the education, yep. the experience. That's what you gotta do. Yeah. Basically. For real. For real. Basically. Never have your eggs in one basket. Always create your own opportunity, even if you are employed un under someone else. Mm. Always do that. That's a bar. And was restructured into two publicly traded holding companies, Remgro and Venfin. Remgro oversaw Rembrandt's traditional assets, while Venfin acquired the technology-oriented assets. Less than a decade later, Remgro and Venfin merged to form Remgro, of which Johann Rupert is still the chairman. In 2000, Rupert was appointed chairman and CEO of Richemont, and the company's non-luxuries-related activities were spun off into Raynet Investments in 2008. Today, Rupert is the chairman of Remgro, Richemont, and Raynet. Richemont is the largest of the three companies, with a market capitalization of 1.51 trillion rands. Raynet is second with a market cap of 3.76 billion euros, 73.63 billion rands, while Remgro is slightly smaller with a 72.98 billion rands market cap. The three companies have shareholdings in various local and international companies that span numerous industries. Remgro's diverse portfolio includes businesses in the media, financial services, healthcare, and consumer goods sectors. Local shares make up more than 70% of the company's portfolio. Controversies When the British design magazine wallpaper described the Afrikaans language as one of the ugliest languages in the world in its September 2005 edition, in reference to the Afrikaans language monument, Rupert responded by withdrawing advertising for his company's brands oh, such as Cartier, Van Cleef and Arpels, Montblanc and Alfred Dunhill from the magazine. Mm. In 2018 Rupert caused some controversy in South Africa for comments he made during an interview with Power FM. He was criticized for denying the alleged existence of white monopoly capital, his account of the process of Afrikaner economic upliftment, and for comments he made regarding the saving habits of black South Africans. Following the incident no, Rupert didn't. issued an apology for his comments. The controversial leader of the Black First Land First Party stated First afterward. First of all, savings. I don't know the year of that graph at the beginning, but um, three hundred and four USD mm -hmm. a month. I mm -hmm. know y'all do rents, but it was in USD a month. Baby, three hundred and four dollars. That is a light bill currently, because mm. because it's hot out here and the electricity is high right now. No but <laughs> for real, baby, that's a light bill. Three hundred and four dollars. Yeah, we seen the numbers was off. A month? By a long shot. 
So say, what we gonna save? It's nothing to save. You can't save nothing. How much is is mortgage and rent? What what what? what I guess he got a little uh little comfortable on that panel and started talking a little too too high. Baby, come on now. You know how they be, they be saying stuff, they, they be saying stuff that they're not supposed to say, that they usually say behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when you get to a certain level, if you have never lived that experience before and you get to a certain level, you 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 can't even fathom what people go through, though. Nah, you're right. So you're what right. saving habits if they're barely being able to put food on the table with that amount? I mean, if anything, be more knowledgeable about what's going on. Yeah, in the, in the don't community criticize so you can lives. say something that's more beneficial to them so they can have a little belief in you. But if you saying stuff like that, no. Yeah. It's easy to yeah. it's easy uh, to apology speak not on gonna help none. Right. It's easy to speak on people when you don't know their experience. It's easy to speak it's, on people when you up. For real. <laughs> when you up, you always got something mm. to say. Always got something to say all of a, all of a sudden. Because baby, we remember those twenty five dollar groceries. Bruh. Okay? Bruh that Rupert's comments were a reason to commit violence against white South Africans. See? Rupert and family wow. were ranked richest in South Africa on the 2023 Forbes list. Violence now. With an estimated net worth of over $11 billion. Now let's have a look at the Rupert Empire. share with everything. For what? For them to go out of space. For generations. Look at all these checks coming in. That's what this is. That's checks coming in right there. Every single day. Mm-hmm. Now, again, there's other billionaires, uh, millionaires in South Africa, but this is the one that you guys send in about this gentleman. Yeah. So just wanted to make that clear because I know that a lot of people they quick to say that hey you know what there's more out there and we understand we do you know yeah. what I'm saying but um he got his foot in a lot of doors he does two I minute mean, account two minute account I agree with diversifying your portfolio mm -hmm. but I mean come on spread the wealth yeah. <laughs> you know spread the knowledge if anything yeah I see he had a football real. club you know you can have a finance school teach some more mm -hmm. people. Mm, so that everybody could win, okay? Yeah. Not just four. <laughs> everybody could win. All right, well, that's all I got to say about it. That's all I got to say about it. I've seen enough. Yeah, that's so. Some stuff right there. Again, we do not condone violence. No, we no, do not. Don't, don't start that. It won't be that. Okay? All right, so we hope you guys enjoyed this video with us. Like this video, subscribe, turn on the post notification bell. We have enabled our super, super thanks if you like support the channel that way, as well as our reaction request forms in our description, description box below. below. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.